everyone welcome to today's video for today I am going to be doing something a little different um, first I'm gonna be showing you how to make this absolutely beautiful beautiful card I cannot tell you how excited I am to make this one um, so that's not the different thing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this card, but once we make this card, I'm gonna be showing you how I'm going to package this up with three other cards I've already made and put it into one of our new acetate boxes and then decorate that um, card box. So it'll be like a nice little gift um, that you could give to anyone really. So um, I have this card, we're gonna make this one together and then I have three other cards that I'm going to pair with it and we're gonna put it in that little gift set is what I'm calling it. Um, I'm not going to show you how to make those three other cards, but I will have all of the supplies and instructions on my um, on my website in the coordinating blog post to this video. So it's always gonna be the first link in the description box below. And this month, you really, really, really wanna make sure you go and check this that uh, blog post out because that blog post is in a blog hop. So for this week, I'm participating in a blog hop with a bunch of other wonderful Stampin' Up! demonstrators from around the world. So you really, really, really wanna make sure you go check that out so that you can go and check out the next persons and everyone following in this week's blog hop. So it's really, really fun. I'm really excited about it. So make sure you go and you check out my blog post. Again, it's the first link in the description box below so that you can get on there and see a bunch of other projects from an, a bunch of other amazing international demonstrators. So to get along with today's project, <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we need to make this card. It looks so stunning, but it's seriously so easy. I cannot even tell you. It's absolutely ridiculous how easy this is to make. So the first thing that we are going to, whoa, my card is falling over. I always put my card to the side so I can like have it as a little reference over here while I'm making the project. <laughs> so the first thing that we're going to need is the Painted Harvest stamp set. Now, this is a stamp set from our new holiday catalog. And if you need a holiday catalog, um, please, please, please let me know. I will send it out to you completely free, no charge. Um, that's just something that I like to do for whoever needs a catalog. I would love to send one out to you, no cost to you. So if you need one, um, either email me at littlemooncreation at gmail.com or you can go over to my website and use the contact tab up at the top and just give me all your information and I'll get one sent right out to you. But this stamp set, you do not want to miss out on this one. It's absolutely beautiful. I will tell you, I was not going to get this one at first. I was like, nah, I probably won't use that. Oh, sorry, that was my laptop. Um, I was like, nah, I probably won't really use that. It's pretty and all, but I don't think that's really gonna be me. I was wrong. It's absolutely me. I absolutely love it. And I am so happy that I ended up getting it or I feel like I'd be kicking myself right now. So this one's great. I'm in love with it. And I actually used this stamp set to make all of the cards. Um, no, that's not true. I used it. I used at least one of the stamps and all of the cards. And then I also used another one, but that, all that information will be down below. Um, for today's, this project, we're only going to need this stamp set. So that's that. For ink, we are going to be using Early Espresso, Wild Wasabi, and Crushed Curry. I'm also going to be using a little bit of our linen thread, which I love. And then for our paper, we are going to be using Very Vanilla. So I have two pieces here. This piece is cut at one inch by four inches. I have another piece here, which is cut at four inches by five and a quarter. I have this piece here, which is wild wasabi, and this is cut at one and a quarter inch by four inches. And then our standard size card base, which is early espresso, and this is cut at eight and a half by five and a half. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take our large piece of a very vanilla, and we're gonna use crushed curry, and we're going to stamp all of our sunflowers. So you guys have seen me do this a hundred times where I stamp my background, kind of like make your own designer series paper. I think this stamp set is absolutely perfect for that. So I'm going to bring in my scratch, my background paper. As you can see, it's been very well loved in making these uh, cards. I'm actually making a bunch of this card uh, to go in a swap that I'm in. So yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that. That's why there's so many flowers on this piece back here because I've made quite a few of these cards so far. Okay, so we are going to start again with crushed curry 
and we're going to grab the two sunflower stamps that are in this set. So there's one that's kind of a bigger image and then one that's a, the more detailed one. We're gonna start with the larger image and I'm just going to stamp a few of these. Um, it is quite a large flower, so you can't get a ton on this one piece of paper, but you can get quite a few. I think I usually get like five or six. Um, the one thing that I would say to keep in mind is to take into account, so here, let me pull my sample and I added a little bit of greenery in here just to kind of break up the sunflowers. Um, so I'm kind of being a little bit mindful of that when I'm stamping all of these because I do want to be able to um, add a little bit of greenery in there so that I can, like I said, break up the color and uh, give it some dimension and whatnot. And one thing I want to note, as I'm stamping this, you'll see that not all of the areas are stamping 100% perfect. That's because that's how this stamp is designed. It's that watercolory look where it's not going to be 100% perfect and that's how it's supposed to be. So if you get this stamp set and you see that happen, don't worry, that's how it's supposed to be. There's nothing wrong with your stamps at all. Do another little one down there. And then I think I'm gonna do a little something right there. And I think that looks good. And it looks pretty bare right now, but keep in mind, like I said, we're going to be adding in some greenery in there, so it'll all turn out. So now I'm going to take the other stamp and ink this up with crushed curry. Now you'll see I'm doing two-step stamping. I'm not stamping off. I'm using full strength crushed curry for both layers. And um, I messed around with both ways to do it. And I have to say I like this the best and it's easier because you don't have to stamp off. Not that stamping off is difficult um, or anything, but it saves me time that I don't have to stamp off constantly. So I'm just going and stamping the second layer on all of these flowers. For these little ones on the edges, I'm not too worried about it. I'm just kind of doing it to give it some fullness, but I'm not too concerned about making sure it looks perfect. Okay, so that is it for our crushed curry and for our sunflowers. So let me go ahead and move this out of the way, move my block. Okay, so next what I want to do is grab our early espresso. And I forgot to mention in the beginning, I do also have my early espresso marker, my Stampin' Write marker uh, nearby. You don't have to use this and you may not even need to use it, um, but I have it handy and I'll show you in a second after we uh, do our stamping, why you might want to grab it for this project. So we're just gonna take the little inner of all of our sunflowers. And actually I am silly, I still need this. Cause there are a couple of little areas that do have um, little bits that I'm gonna have to stamp off on. I was just trying to get ahead of myself. So I'm gonna line this up in the center as best as possible, but you'll see here that there are a couple little areas where I didn't get the ink just because I didn't line up the uh, center as best as I could. Now you can spend the time trying to line it up or you can just use your Stampin' Write marker and fill in the little bits. Um, it's completely up to you. I think it's easier to just fill in with the Stampin' Write marker and some of them, like this one, there's a couple of little tiny areas. I'm not gonna be too worried about it. I'm just going to take my marker here on a couple of these larger areas that you can tell and just kind of fill it in. And some people, you know, honestly, people probably wouldn't even notice. I notice because I've made it and you guys I'm sure notice now because I just pointed it out, but some people may not notice. So if you don't feel like you need to, don't do it. Um, it's definitely, it doesn't ruin the card or anything. You can definitely still um, give the card as is and it'll look absolutely beautiful. So I just filled in a couple little spots just so that there weren't any bare areas. Now I can take, oh no, I still can't. I keep trying to move my scratch paper, but I don't want to, I don't know why I keep doing that. Okay, ignore me. Now I'm going to bring in my wild wasabi and then I'm going to bring in one of the leaf um, stamps from the set. So there are these, actually there are four technically leaf sets. So we're gonna be using this more, um, I don't know, 
I don't know what you just how you would describe this. We're going to be using this set and you can see there's one that's a fuller image and then one that just has the details. I'm actually going to use the one that has details because again, we're doing this just to add in a little bit of texture, another color um, to kind of break everything up. I don't want this to be the focal point, so I don't want it to be too much and uh, stand out too much. So I'm just going to stamp it down and then I'm going to actually use the second generation ink and stamp it again so I get two different tones of uh, greens on my project here. So I'm only gonna do it in a couple of areas, just wherever I feel like I wanna break it up a little bit. Maybe we'll do this up here. I think that looks good. You have to keep in mind that there's gonna be a banner right across the front as well. So, you know, don't be too concerned about where you're putting all of this stuff because it's gonna look completely different when we actually finish putting the card together. Okay, now I can actually remove this because we are done stamping our background piece. Next, we need to go ahead and stamp our greeting. So I'm gonna scoot that off to the side. I can't speak right now. We're gonna grab our little piece of very vanilla and I'm gonna grab this sentiment here that says, I am thankful for you. Super adorable, just a really nice thank you sentiment. It could be used for any type of occasion. I think this card is wonderful for anything. I'm gonna grab my early espresso ink again and I'm gonna just ink this up. Do, 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 do. And then we're just gonna stamp this right in the middle of our very vanilla piece, just like so. Move that off to the side. And now really all we need to do is construct our card. Actually, let's do this first. So while I have this piece, I'm going to flip this over. And I'm using Fast Fuse today and I will show you why in 2.2 seconds. Ignore the hair that I got in my Fast Fuse because that just happens here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mount this onto our piece of wild wasabi. I'm trying to get it as straight as possible. Okay, and then we're going to grab, oh man. Oh no, 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 I did that right. I thought I messed up. We're gonna grab our linen thread and I'm gonna flip this over again and I'm gonna put my fast fuse on the back of it. Now you're probably thinking, well why? Because you wanna add your linen thread. Adding the fast fuse first makes it easier for this type of project, and now I have Fast Fuse stuck to my desk. Um, for this type of project, it makes it easier to stick down the linen thread, I found. So what I'm going to do is just unspool a little bit of this, just because it's easier to handle that way. And I am going to take my linen thread and put it on the piece where I want it, and that looks about good to me. So I'm going to pull a little so I have a little tail here. And then all I'm going to do is push my tail on the back. And because I have that adhesive there, it's already stuck down. I don't have to fumble with tape. I don't have to do anything like that. I find this technique really useful for small pieces like this, especially with the linen thread because it is also small as well. Instead of having to mess with tape on a small piece like this, just stick it down to the adhesive on the back. You're gonna put that adhesive there anyways, so you might as well use it to your advantage. So I'm gonna wrap it twice, straight up and down. And then again, just secure the um, piece with my fingers and let me grab some scissors and we'll cut this just like that. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing over on this side. So again, I'm just going to take my linen thread. I'm gonna give myself a little tail here and I'm going to stick my tail on the back and then wrap it once, wrap it twice kind of gonna look and see if I feel like that looks good or if I need to make any adjustments. Looks good to me. So I'm going to flip it over, stick the little tail on the back and snip it. And then you go, there, then you go, <laughs> there you go. I am gonna take my fast fuse and just run a little bit on the back where that um, thread that we just put down is, but other than that, you should be good. And then we're gonna bring in our piece that we just stamped on, and I'm going to put this right in the middle. Oh, so, so pretty. Okay, then we can flip this over, put some more Fast Fuse on the back. And again, I'm just using Fast Fuse because I wanted to use it for, um, with the linen thread that I just showed you, because it's a stronger adhesive. So that technique is gonna work much better. 
Um, but you don't have to. You can. I used um, Snail on my sample project and it worked just fine. Um, I just like using Fast Foods a little bit more so that I make sure that it stays nice and um, secure on there. I don't know why I couldn't think of secure. Okay, I'm going to take my piece of early espresso cardstock, fold that bad boy in half, and then stick this down just like so. And that's our card for today. So usually this is where I would tell you goodbye, but because I'm doing something a little special for today, I'm not going to. So I will bring in the three other cards that I've made to go along with this. So we have this one, this one, this one's probably my favorite uh, second and um, after this one, this one's probably my second favorite. And then we have this one. So this is my little bundle of like fall type cards that I'm going to be putting in one of our new acetate boxes to um, and package up to give to somebody. So one thing I wanted to note is you can fit five cards and five envelopes in the box. Um, as you can see, I've taken the envelope and I've put it in a, um, one of our clear, um, our clear envelopes with the card and that makes it a little bulkier. So um, I'm gonna go stick with four, but you can do up to five in the box. So the first thing that I'm going to do, speaking of that, is grab my envelope and my little baggie. And the reason I like to put my cards in bags is because, um, especially in a little box like this, it's mainly protected, but if somebody, I mean, I know for me, when um, I give this to somebody, they're going to pull the cards out and start looking at them, and I just didn't want any of the embellishments to get bumped or bruised or anything. Um, so I went ahead and put them in the little baggies. Most of the time when I give cards to someone, I put them in the bags for that reason, even if I'm just handing it to somebody. Um, and I actually store my cards after I make them in um, clear bags so they don't get messed up. So that's kind of why I did that. Actually, I wanna put, no, we'll leave that one on the top just cause. So here is our acetate box. So they come flat like this. I think there's 10 in a package. All you have to do is kind of start bending it and playing with it and then just fold in everything. It's super easy to assemble. So we're gonna tuck one side in and then fold, I'm gonna just fold these, but then I'm going to stick my cards in. And again, because I used the um, clear envelope sleeves, um, I think they're called clear envelopes in the catalog. That's why I keep calling them that. I'm using the clear sleeves. Um, it's gonna make them fit in here a little tighter, but they fit in here just fine. I mean, you saw I just slid everything in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Just like that, so sting and adorable. So this would be absolutely wonderful to give to somebody just like this, but we're gonna step it up a notch. I'm gonna set that off to the side for just one second. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of designer series paper. This is from the uh, same suite as the stamp set. I can't remember what the actual name of the designer series paper is. I'll put it on the screen. Um, and it'll, again, it'll be in the blog post down below, but, um, this is just a piece and it's cut at 12 by one and three quarter inches, I want to say. Let me double check. Yep, one and three quarter inches. So 12 inches by one and three quarters. And then I have a little circle here that I used uh, my stitched framelits, uh, stitched shaped framelits to cut a circle out. And this is pool party. And then I'm also going to be using our uh, delicate white doilies. So. I cut this out with the framelits. I did that before so you guys didn't have to watch me cut out a circle. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is scooch those out of the way a little bit. Let's take our early espresso and there's another greeting in the same stamp set and it says your kindness means so much more than you will ever know. And I just think that that's so awesome and it's such a nice greeting to put on the front of our package to give our set of cards to somebody. So that's what I'm going to be using for this. I'm just going to take my early espresso and ink this bad boy up and then stamp right onto our little circle. So adorable. I think I still have adhesive on my, okay, there. It was trying to stick to my desk. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to take a doily. Just one, let me make sure. Yep, I have just one. 
I'm going to flip that over and let me, I'm just gonna use fast use because I have it here. Maybe if it'll work. Sometimes, does anybody else ever get like a bunch of gunkies on the, their fast fuse and then it stops working and it's very frustrating sometimes. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, I don't know. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna stick it on to the doily and I just thought that that was a nice little touch. Then let's bring in our cards. So you can score your piece of paper. I'm not going to just because I don't know the exact dimensions to score that. So what I'm going to do is just take my paper and start wrapping it around. And as I come to the corners, I'm just going to kind of crease it. And then before I secure this to the actual box, I'm going to, so we've got kind of my creases. So now I can see where I want to um, fold. So I'm going to take this and fold on all of those little crease lines that I just made just like so. This paper is absolutely beautiful. This uh, sunflower print on the other side that you're seeing right now of this one, so stinking gorgeous. I love these papers. Oh, I'm a sucker for designer series paper though, I swear. So eh, take that of what you will. So I'm just going to take some fast fuse and I'm gonna, whoa, I don't know what that was. Something just flew, I don't know. So I'm gonna take some fast fuse and stick that onto um, one side of the designer series paper. And then I'm gonna stick that down to my box. I have all of my crease lines there. So I should be able to just very nicely, oh, I have it upside down, very nicely just wrap that around. And then the side that's free, I'm going to put some fast fuse on. Oh, I think it's raining outside right now. Colorado weather has been crazy the past few days. Let me tell you, it's raining and gross. And then today all day it's been kind of bright and sunny, but now it looks, I think it's starting to rain again. <gasps> it is, oh my goodness. Those are big raindrops too. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. If you don't know, my desk is right here and then right out in front of me is a big window right into the front of my house. Anyways, okay. So now I'm going to take, now that we have our paper wrapped around, I'm just gonna take my doily and actually, I think I'm gonna put it on to, no, that's probably not a good idea. I'm going to get my doily here and just put my fast fuse on the back. Just one little strip and then stick that down. And now we have a nice little box with coordinating cards. It's decorated, really adorable. That took maybe five minutes and you have a super easy gift you can give to someone. You could make these and just kind of keep them. I don't know if anybody else does this, but we get like general generic presents and we keep them so that um, when we have like a last minute birthday party to run to or um, like a thank you gift, a hostess gift, we can just kind of pull from it. These would be absolutely wonderful to do that with. Just make a stockpile of these, have them in your, um, in your closet and just pull from it whenever you needed to. So I really, really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to make sure you go to the coordinating blog post to look at all of the projects in this week's blog hop and also to see how I made all of the other cards that are in this cute little adorable box. And um, I think that's it. I felt like I was gonna say something else, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> so anyways, I will see you guys um, later. I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching. Bye.